accused of slaughtering the four Idaho University students appears in court in shackles. His mother and sister arrived for the brief hearing arm in arm, their faces masked. His father, also wearing a mask, was a few steps behind them. When Brian Koberger entered the courtroom here in Pennsylvania, his eyes went directly to his family members seated in the front row, dad, mom, and two sisters, all holding tissues. Koberger listened intently to the judge, even responding verbally with answers like, yes, I have, yes, I understand. Now, when he was led out of the courtroom, he did look back at his family and mouth the words, I love you. Koberger will be flown back to Idaho to face justice, and that could happen as soon as tonight. Public defender Jason Labar represented Koberger. Hello. How you doing? How y'all doing today? Good, good. Take a look at your driver's license real quick if I could. See, he's right up on that van, man. He was right up on the back end of that van. Hold you over for tailgating. Is this your car? Okay, cool. Where are you headed? Well, we're coming from WSU. And What's WSU? So we're okay. I, I'm having a hard time hearing you because of the traffic. So you're coming from Washington State University, and you're going where? Oh. Oh, okay. We're a little, we're slightly clutching driving for hours. Hours, days. Hours to drive. Almost. Okay. So what did you say about some SWAT team thing or yeah, something? There was, yeah, there was the mass shooting and everything. We don't where? where? Interesting. Well, it's horrifying because he's supposed to be university. You know what I mean? So y'all work at the university there? Or? I actually do work there. Oh. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I hadn't heard about that incident. Just yesterday or? No, it just happened this morning. About an hour and a half ago, we're still wrapping it up. I'm not sure the solution is if they did shoot somebody. Let's see. And then you can go know about that actually. You were there. Interesting. Wow. Okay. Well, do me a favor and don't follow too close, okay? All right. Thank you. Appreciate you. You're still not sure that we're living in the future. Let's talk about Brian Koberger. This is the guy that recently unalived these four college students in Idaho. So this creeper was actually getting a doctorate in criminal justice. That being said, he likely had a plan for how to unalive these kids. So that really didn't give the cops much to go on. However, when they were cleaning up the crime scene, they were like, hey, let's look at the DNA that's here and see whose DNA should not be here. And the FBI was like, hey, I like that idea. If you want to, you can just run this through our database of criminals. Brian Koberger had never been arrested before, so he wasn't in the database. So this is how we know we're in the future, because then the cops were like, let's take this unknown DNA and run it through a public database. So when they found matches with this family, they just called up Aunt Mildred and was like, hey, do you know somebody that lives in Idaho? Of course I do. My weird nephew, Brian Koberger, lives there. And there you go. Cops are like, got you, bitch. We now know from the affidavit how the Idaho suspect exited the house. I believe because of his OCD, that's probably how he got in too. If you've watched me for very long, you've probably seen one of my sliding glass door videos and how to secure them because they're a vulnerability. 
I was hesitant about making this video. But if you got kids that live in a house or an apartment with sliding glass doors, it'll be worth it. The video I'm getting ready to show is three years old and has around 300,000 views. There are hundreds like it. All right, I'm gonna show you real quick. Get you gotta position it and get it in a good place right here, like this. Now at the same time, okay, and that's it and you're in. Adding a security bar can prevent this. Having a dowel rod cut to the length of the track and laying it down in there can also help. If you don't want to mess with that, I carry an adjustable door brace in my Amazon store. We need to talk about the probable cause affidavit that was just released for Brian Koberger because it, it's wild and I honestly can't believe that we got this much information. It was 19 pages long. I took some notes, so let's go over this. They were able to get Brian's DNA because he left the knife sheet by Mogan's body and the button that was on the sheet had his DNA on it. So they sent it off to some type of DNA genealogy thing and it came back as a match. The wild thing is that officers figured out his car within two weeks of the murders and they started to track it. They got video footage from Washington State University's um, parking lot where they found the white Elantra and then saw that it was registered to Brian Koberger. This next part we're going to talk about, I'm just going to be very clear. Please do not victim shame. Please do not go after Dylan for this. There are a number of reasons why this was handled the way that it was handled. So Dylan heard what was sounded like Kaylee was playing with her dog upstairs. Dylan looked out her bedroom door, but she didn't hear anything. She looked out her room a second time a little bit later, and she heard what she thought was crying coming from Xana's room, and then heard a male voice saying, it's okay, I'm going to help you. It's unclear if this was Brian or if this was Ethan. Dylan said that she opened the door a third time after hearing more crying and she saw a man dressed in all black and a mask walking towards her. She stated he was about 5'10 or taller, wasn't like bulky but did have like some sort of an athletic build and had very bushy eyebrows. He walked past Dylan as she stood frozen in fear and left out the back sliding glass door where then Dylan locked herself in her bedroom. I'm gonna come back to this. The next morning, Brian's GPS showed that he went back to the crime scene. I was thinking maybe to go get the knife sheath, but I don't think that's the case because he knows that Dylan saw him. So maybe he was just going to go see his handiwork. I don't know. With more investigation, phone records also indicated that he had been stalking the girls for nearly three months before the murders. And while he was stalking, he was also trying to get employment with law enforcement in Pullman and expressed interest in helping rural areas analyze tech data in public safety operations. So while he was stalking these girls and planning this murder, he was trying to get in with law enforcement in their tech division. Insane. I know so many people are wondering why would Dylan not call 911? And here's my theory. Remember in the 911 call how there was an unconscious roommate? I think Dylan was that unconscious roommate. I think Bethany maybe woke up found Dylan unconscious in her bedroom, called 911, and then that's how everything played out. Dylan was probably so terrified because Brian had to have been covered in blood. Some random man's in her house. She probably passed out from fear. It was probably a fight or flight type of situation. Either way, this is awful. It's so sad. A six-year-old little boy has been taken into police custody after shooting his first grade teacher during class. The shooting took place at Richneck Elementary School, which is in Newport News, Virginia. Police confirmed the boy intentionally shot his teacher, 25-year-old Abby Zwerner. Abby is being hailed as a hero as after she was shot in the chest, she yelled for the other students to flee. Abby is listed in critical condition with life-threatening injuries. Inside starting to What to do when the cartel is after you, part two. All right, you're involved with the cartel, they're after you and they're dangerous. There's some exotic weaponry coming in from the south. Cartels using drones. Yeah, that's been going on for a while. All right, we're gonna start in Chicago. We're modeling Ozark, Marty Bird situation again. 
You might think you're safe because you're in Chicago, it's far from Mexico, but it's actually more dangerous because the cartel has actually been coming from Canada more often than Mexico. We saw this coming and in the past two years we've been able to acquire two additional passports. One in Granada for $150,000 investment. We'll buy property here with our real name because this is where we want them to think that we'll be. So where we're actually going to be is in the Oceania Islands of Vanuatu. So we're able to get a passport here with 130 k in just one month. We're going to cite religious reasons for wanting to do a name change. So now we'll have a new name and a very strong mobile pass. We were able to get here undercover by ship so there's no flight record. We can rent a nice villa like this on a monthly basis so we can always keep moving. We want to stay mobile. Buy a Jeep like this in case we need to make a quick escape. And after that we just chill, lay low, and enjoy life.